Good afternoon and happy holidays. Today's Christmas Eve 2019. We just wanted to do a, a little video uh, to show the nice collection of palms and cycads at the Florida State College of Jacksonville on Beach Boulevard. I'm at the South Campus and wanted to start off showing you this palm here. This is called Camrops humilis very serifera or the silver European fan palm. The difference between this and the green is it grows in higher elevations in the Atlas Mountains, particularly in Morocco. So it has this uh, glaucous, powdery, waxy coating uh, that allows it to survive uh, lower temperatures. And then I'll move over to the green version here. These are the green native to lower elevations in the European region. Uh, Shamrops humilis, the green version, and it's a clustering palm. They can grow up to 10 to 15 feet, multi-trunked, but this is a very old specimen planted in a uh, concrete planter box here. And we'll move over along the south side of the building. We have uh, our native sable palmettos, native to the southeast United States, throughout the state of Florida, over to eastern Mexico. A uh, native palm that grows up to 60 feet tall. Then behind it, we have Sable mauritiaformis, known as commonly known as a savanna palm, it's native to Central and South America, has a thinner, greener trunk and longer, lacier, more deeply incised leaves. Nice collection. This has been here for a while as well. And then another Florida native, along with the sable palmetto, this is called Aciliorafi ridei, the Parotis or Everglades palms. It's uh, native to the southern tip of Florida in the Everglades, hence the name but it's pretty cold hardy. It'll grow north up into uh, coastal South Carolina and Georgia. Uh, this is a nice old clumping specimen. It's a uh, clumping palm and they call it the uh, Everglades and also it's like a saw palm. It has little teeth on the petioles. Uh, clustering palm, uh, really good for screening and, and hedging. And then we'll go over here to the left, this is called Alagoptra arenara, seashore palm native to the coastal regions of Brazil. Seashore meaning it can tolerate extreme maritime conditions, a lot of wind, a lot of salt air, uh, but a very beautiful palm, uh, light green on the top uh, with silvery at, on the bottom, undersides of the leaves. Really look nice with a nice spotlight or uplight on this at night to really highlight this uh, silver color. And then moving over to around the corner here. Another special one. Here he is, it's hiding back here. Trithrinex brasiliensis, uh, native to Brazil. Looks similar to a uh, windmill palm, but has a larger leaf. This one's actually, you can see the infructescence, the flower stalks, once they start bearing fruit, they change from inflorescence to infructescence, but it's got some uh, ripening seed up there. Uh, and these two specimens, there's another smaller one behind, have obviously been here for a long time, but they call it the spiny fiber palm too, because it has like uh, needles all throughout the trunks and the petioles. Very unique palm, very cold hardy for this area. And then just to our right here, we have uh, Rapis excelsia. Uh, this is uh, the lady palm native to China, uh, likes a filtered light or understory palm, uh, also a clustering palm that you can see multiple offsets coming up. This is native to China and Japan. It also makes, I might add, a wonderful house palm, house plant. This is what I would call your phoenix, your date palm group. Uh, genus is phoenix. Uh, there's no true species in here. I believe this is Canariensis hybrid, maybe mixed with Sylvestris or Dactylifera. I could tell by the slender trunks, but there's a grouping of them here. And then over here we have Phoenix reclinata, commonly known as the uh, Senegal date palm. It's native to the country of Africa. You can see it's a big mass, a, a, a clump. It also suckers and sends out offsets. Uh, they use this as a, as a nice hedge because it's very dense uh, as a buffer. And then over here we have the common edible date palm, Phoenix dactylifera, native to the Middle East. Uh, it's also, when young, it clusters, but at this age, the uh, offsets, they stop producing and it's a solitary palm. But you can see they use this as a roadside palm, 
uh, along the avenues, Beach Boulevard and Atlantic Boulevard have them up and down. Uh, it was part of the greater Jacksonville uh, roadway improvement project. Also, they line hotel entrances and uh, malls and so forth. I'm heading to Copernicia Alba, Alba meaning white wax. Uh, it's one Copernicia that's not native to Cuba. It's na native to Bolivia, Argentina, Paraguay, many countries in South America. Very good palm for our humidity, our rainfall, and it's very cold hardy. We actually sell these at Earthworks. There's one planted out right in our uh, west flower bed on the southwest corner outside of the main, the front gate and on Earthworks on Beach Boulevard. Very nice specimen that currently today it's in uh, fruit. Very good palm though, small, compact. We have a native to Madagascar. It's called Bismarckia nobilis. Very large, massive palm. Uh, solitary, very gorgeous silvery color fronds, uh, pretty cold hardy too. I actually personally would rate it a lot more cold hardy than zone 10A which is minimum temperatures of 30. I would say it takes down into the mid 20s so I would rate it a good zone 9B uh, which the coastal and river areas, the southern parts of Duval County, uh, this would grow well in. Uh, then we have another Madagascar native over here. Dipsis tacarii, the triangle palm. Once the uh, leaf bases have come off, it's kind of hard to see the three sides, but if you look above me, there's a side facing south, a side facing to the north uh, towards the building, and then a side of the petioles facing east. So it's, it's three-sided, hence the name triangle palm. Also another cold hardy specimen. This tolerate temperatures in the mid 20s, so I would say it's a zone 9B. Then we have a Australian native, Livestona australis, the Australian fan palm. Uh, it's kind of intermediate between a Chinese fan and a ribbon palm. Uh, the leaves are moderately incised, but this, uh, this is a pretty tall grower. Uh, it can grow up to about 40 to 50 feet. And then I'll show you its relative here. This is the Livestona decora, which has really got a unique uh, curve to it. Could have been that there was another palm or tree growing here at one time which caused it to grow to the light, but you can see how highly, deeply incised the fronds are. And what's unique, when the sun's out, which today we have overcast skies, the sun shines, sun rays, and the wind uh, gives it a ribbon look. They kind of flicker just like a metallic looking ribbon, hence the name uh, ribbon, ribbon fan palm. And then I'll move over to right over here. These are uh, mule palms. It's a cross between Butia capitata pindo palm and a Sagris roman zafianum, which is a queen palm. It's a hybrid, sterile. Usually they have to be uh, precisely pollinated. The pindo is usually the mother and the pollen acquired from the male queen palm has to be uh, delicately transferred to the receptor on the pindo and you've got a mule palm. Very cold hardy, very robust. It exhibits hybrid vigor, the best of each uh, parent species. Uh, we also sell those at Earthworks. And then we have our Washingtonian Robustas or Sky Duster, uh, Mexican fan palms native to uh, northern Mexico and coastal, uh, coastal southern California. These guys can grow up to 100 feet. Usually they get that, they attain that height on the west coast, but here they become lightning rods. But you can see there's some pushing 60 feet here. Uh, it's a very common palm uh, in, throughout Florida. And then over here, I have uh, Aranga angleri, and, and also another cluster, or a good palm for uh, screening and shielding. It's a sugar palm native to Hawaii, the uh, Japanese and Taiwan islands. Uh, we also sell these at Earthworks, but it's a great palm for dark green color, can grow in full sun, part sun, part shade. Here we have a Phoenix Reclinata, Senegal date palm, a cluster like the one I showed you earlier in the video. Uh, this can attain heights of 40 feet. It's a clumping palm. You can also remove a lot of the offsets and suckers and lower fronds so you can really see the multiple trunks in there. It's kind of difficult to see that with all the foliage here. 
And then let's see, we have, uh, and this is an odd one for Jacksonville. I'll go over these two Brahea species. This is, I know, I remember the sign, which was once here, is obviously gone. This is Brahea brandigeri, or the San Jose Hesper palm. Soft leaf, uh, grows kind of in uh, Southern California, Northwest Mexico. Uh, can attain a height of about 30 feet, very cold hardy. This one's growing, although it doesn't look like the best specimen. Um, doesn't like our humidity and rainfall as much as some of the native uh, Florida palms do, but she's, there were two here at one time, but she's still surviving. And then over here we have a Brahia armata, which is a cousin to this. And uh, it has more of a bluish leaf. Again, there was once two here, and uh, you can see this one's really stunted from our humidity and rainfall. It's hanging on though. And then behind us, this is another special phoenix. This is called Phoenix Theophrastii, also known as the Cretan date palm. It's a native palm to the, to the island of Crete, uh, south of Turkey there on, along the Mediterranean. It has a real bluish look. It has a clustering effect to it. It's multi-trunk. Uh, this is a very old specimen that's probably been here about 20 years. You don't see these too often in nursery trade as they're uh, very rare, but I collected one myself attending the uh, Central Florida Palm and Cycad Society. A lot of uh, personal people in the group tend to go places and travel and collect seeds and trade, so it's a really nice, nice palm and it does well in uh, North Florida. And then we'll go over here. This is another, I would call, hybrid sable area here. This big guy here is called uh, Sable Domigensis, which is the Dominican version of our native sable palm. It's a lot more robust, kind of has a silvery tinge to the leaves, and the leaves are a lot larger than the typical sable palmetto. Uh, very cold hardy, too, being a native to the Dominican Republic, but uh, it can grow to a height of about 40 feet or so. A nice uh, palm to have in a sable palm collection. And then we have some, a few native sable palms and then there's some hybrids. Uh, this possibly could be a sable minor a hybrid which a sable minor is just a foliage plant. It has a medium-sized fran, hardly any trunk, uh, just basically you see the petioles just coming out of the ground even at a very old age they might attain a height of about six feet but I could tell with this has a little developing trunk and it's been here quite some years that it's probably a hybrid. Uh, as well as this guy here, it has larger fronds and a robust trunk, but not as uh, doesn't grow as fast as a sable palmetto. And then we'll go over here. This is another uh, Livestona cousin. This is Livestona cerebus, or the Tayral palm, native to Southeast Asia. You can tell these specimens have really taken off. They're probably up there 50 feet now. And a lot of the seeds, it uh, really bears a lot of seeds. A lot of the seeds have made it back into the wood line. You can see a couple nice specimens coming up here, but they're related to the Livestone Australis chinensis, which is the Chinese fan palm, and the Livestone decor, the ribbon palm. Uh, that all the little Livestone, as I mentioned, will grow in our climate here. But yeah, very, very tall specimens and a lot of, uh, little seedlings that are adults or juveniles now that are coming up in the woods. And this is a really unique one here. This is called Raphidophyllum hestrix, or the needle palm, needle palm, or otherwise known as porcupine palm. You can see the large uh, six to eight inch spines that are growing out of the trunk. It's a cluster, and it's said to be one of the most cold hardy palms uh, that'll grow in the southeast. It's a uh, southeast United States native but due to habitat uh, destruction and development, you don't see too many of them in the wild that much anymore, but this is a very old specimen. Uh, geez, you rarely ever see them this tall, seven or eight feet tall, but I'm thinking it's probably 30 years plus. Changing over to plants, uh, a good complement to palms are cycads, and they're not actually palms, they're actually living fossils. They existed on the planet here during dinosaurs, probably a lot of them were dinosaur food. Oh, they date back to 350 million years and they're really unique to uh, be able to survive in habitat even during one mass extinction. 
This particular beautiful specimen is called Cycas panzuhuensis, which is a native to uh, Southeast Asia, Japan, China. It's actually a real close relative to the Sago, Cycas revoluta, which people commonly call us Sago palms. I always correct them because it's not even related to a palm. Uh, these are called gymnosperms, the first seed bearing plants, like I said, dating back 350 million years ago. Um, they're all toxic, so you got to be careful when you pet plant them. Uh, make sure you protect young children that aren't knowledgeable about that as well as pets because they're pretty toxic plants. That's probably what has led them to survive to this current day. Uh, again, commonly known as the uh, cycad. And it has longer leaves and they're a little bit wider than the sago. Uh, that's, how you, that's a distinguishing factor, particularly the fronds, and they kind of have a upward and then a recurving configuration to them. So switching countries, this is a Zamia robusta, uh, a cycad native to Mexico, Belize, Guatemala, Central and South America. Uh, robust means large in size, you can see the caudex. Another thing I wanted to inform watchers of, this is a trunk, but it commonly in cycad terms it's called a caudex, C-A-U-D-E-X, and it's also a cluster. But what's really unique is when the new, they call it a new flush of foliage comes out, it's kind of like a burgundy reddish color and it's soft and then it hardens off and turns darker green like these, they've hardened off. But um, cycads as a whole grow extremely slow, but when that new flush of fronds come out, it's like Christmas time. They come out so fast, they grow so fast and just looks like a new, you're opening new presents. And then back here hidden, we have a Australian native. This is called Macrozamia morii, uh, native to Queensland, Australia. By all, the, by, all these are cold hardy, by the way. Uh, Macrozamia morii, this guy can attain a height of uh, probably about 10 to 15 feet of trunk. It almost looks like a palm. The very first time I saw it, I was confused when I just started educating myself on cycads. I thought it was some type of palm, but uh, a, a great cycad to have. And then we go back to Mexico again. This is called uh, Dayun Edule. Uh, they call it the gum palm, even though it's a uh, cycad. I just want to show you, this is a uh, male cone. It's, uh, it, it bears cones, and the cones all have to be pollinated in some countries like the Encephalardus native to South America. I'm sorry, South Africa and Africa. They actually are pollinated uh, and habitat by a beetle, which we don't have the beetle here, so a cultivar, a grower, a collector, uh, when the cones come out, the male pollen has to actually be hand pollinated uh, onto the female ovary so the seed can actually germinate. So it's a pretty tough process. And then let's see, uh, we'll go over to the native zamias here. This uh, little group is uh, an actual Florida native. Uh, Good as a ground cover, it's a shrubby cycad. It really doesn't develop much caudex or trunk on it. This is called Zamia floridana or Zamia integrifolia, cinnamon, synonym for one another, sorry about that. Uh, grows in clusters, it's a good understory palm, or a cycad I should say, under the palms. Uh, full sun will grow the cycad leaves shorter and denser and then shade, they'll be a little more elongated and wispy. So we've got, uh, and, and they grow maybe to about two or three feet. And then there's another version here. I believe this is another, not too sure what this one is. Uh, it could be Zamia erosa, it could be Zamia enormous, but it's a uh, Mexican native. You can see the leaf, individual leaflets are far longer and wider, and it grows up taller than the uh, common Florida one, Zamia integrifolia. And then we have, here's our native, uh, native to Japan, that is Cycas revoluta, or Sago cycad. Uh, pretty common as uh, you can find them in box stores or our nursery, we sell them as well, but it's, a, it's another good hardy plant. We'll move over to here. This is a, another Dayun, like the Dayun edule that had the male cone on it. This is Dayun spinulosum, it's another Mexican native. You can see the fronds are quite a bit longer. They have more gloss to them, the leaflets are larger, and you can see 
spinulosum because it has spines on the petioles and individual little thorns on each little leaflet there. But the foliage leaflets tend to recurve down to the ground and it's a larger, uh, larger leaf and the color and the shine to the leaf, that's the distinguishing factor because there's a lot of uh, cycads that look very similar that even I have difficult times sometimes distinguishing the difference. And then here's another uh, cycad. This is Cycas tatangensis, uh, native to Taiwan. Looks very, very similar to the uh, common Cycas revoluta. Just has longer leaves. Another native growing here at the uh, South Campus at the Florida State College is uh, Saranoa repens, otherwise known as the uh, silver saw palmetto. Uh, commonly, you mostly see green ones, and the green ones are pretty much can be found throughout the state of Florida. Now these silvery ones, they have what this is called as the glaucous uh, waxy white uh, wax on it. Uh, you can, particularly, I've noticed in my travels, a lot of these along the coast, particularly in uh, St. Lucie and Martin counties, like right on the barrier islands and right along the coast. Uh, these are a clustering palm. I've also done some research and been told that it's a good pharmaceutical rep for men uh, to, to help with prostate. Uh, the, the seeds have an element in them that, that helps, uh, helps you with your prostate function and so forth. And you can find them, the uh, vitamins, uh, saw palmetto vitamins in your local health food stores. But uh, it's very cold hardy. This you can be found from actually any part of the state of Florida along the Gulf Coast up into the coastal Carolina areas. Uh, I, I have seen some old specimens as tall as these European fans. They're probably 150, 200 years old. A friend of mine, uh, John Rossi, who has a palm collection, you can see in my list of videos, I've featured his property. He has an island and there's some uh, old native specimens there that uh, he didn't have bulldozed down when he developed the property and they're probably 15 feet tall. Magnificent specimens, very hard to find nowadays. But I just wanted to uh, not forget this important palm. Just to close, I just wanted to say I'm David Casella, a nurseryman, palm specialist, and cycad specialist at Earthworks uh, on Beach Boulevard. Uh, if you ever have some free time and want to come in and enjoy a little garden here on the south side of the uh, Florida State Community College uh, at, at uh, Beach Boulevard South Campus, come on and walk on through and enjoy nature, enjoy the palms and cycad collection.